and then all of a sudden you feel pressure on your buttocks area, and then you feel two hands on your shoulders. Because William Shatner is trying to fuck you up the ass, maybe you don't feel the same way about William Shatner anymore. Maybe you don't feel the same way about celebrities anymore. Maybe you have a different opinion about them. Maybe you have shame. Maybe you have guilt. Maybe you have a, a person that you don't even see in the mirror anymore. That's not, and, and the shame and the guilt and, and, the, and the sickness that comes along with that. No, you can't go to the police. No, you can't go to your parents because they laugh at you. They don't believe you. Oh, that's Jim Cornette. That's William Shatner. That's Barry Bonds. That's Liberace or whoever the case may be. And sicko, that is as plain as I can put it to you <clears throat> as to why these people don't. I know why they don't go to the police. There's countless, there's thousands and thousands of cases. No, not all against Cornette, but thousands of cases out there where people are violated by celebrities, by important people in their communities, by mayors, by governors, by popes, by people in the religious deal, which is, a, we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> and these are the people that you trust. And when you go and say, Father Murphy, try to butt fuck me, who believes you? Almost nobody. But finally, thanks to the news and finally people creating a forum, much like myself, for people to be able to come forward, oh, a, lot, a lot of these people are being done away with. They're being put behind bars, be it, be it crime happened 30, 35, 40 years ago in some cases. Right. And that's what I'm doing. I don't, I don't necessarily care. I don't care if Jimmy goes to jail or not. Because he's getting so old, how long would he live there anyway? <laughs> he, he probably wouldn't be there five years. And he's such a mental unstable that he would say something to somebody, and somebody would kill him. So he wouldn't be in jail 30 days before somebody would off him anyway. So there'd be nothing to gain there unless you want Jimmy dead. But if you really want to hurt him, get into his pocketbook. If he violated you, and there's been plenty, come forward. Get his DVD money. Get his get his video. To, get his uh, book money. Right. He's getting ready to go on the World Wide Web selling everything he's got. Get some of it. I don't blame you. I know if he violated me, I'd certainly be in line to get some. Oh, sure. And the only thing I've asked for is if they want to make a, a, a small contribution my way to the Bowling Foundation for helping them out, that's fine. Otherwise, I don't want to dime. Okay. Now, now, I'm going to go ahead and get off on this now because I want to make sure we get it in. Okay. And then if you have any other questions, we will go back to it. But there's been a lot of people wanting to know exactly what the Bowling Foundation is, and some people have snickered. Some people don't like my, uh, my catchphrases that I've used to make people – to make sure that people don't forget about the Bowling Foundation. And, yeah, it sounds a little different. But you know what? People don't forget. People remember the Bowling Foundation. And there's been people that have stepped up and want to come forward and want to make contributions and want to help the Bowling Foundation. And believe me, help is wanted and help is needed. Because what I do, everywhere I go, especially in this tri-state area, when I'm out and about, people know me. I've got a, I've got a big car that was that was given to me by Paul Miller Ford uh, because they realized what what important things I did in the community and they wanted me to have a nice vehicle to be able to do that with. And King B is on the front and back license plate. I hide from nobody. If, if I was going to be out committing crimes against children, believe me, I wouldn't have a license tag that would be that easy to find. I'm out there to help the children, to help kids, and to make life a little easier on them give them an ear that ordinarily they wouldn't have. And just for some reason, man, the kids know that they can talk to me, be it 8, 10, 12, 15, 17, 19, or early 20s. I say kids, but, you know, in their, in their early 20s, they are kids. You know, the, 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 a lot of them haven't finished college yet. I remember when I was 27, I was still a kid. I still had a lot to learn. So I try to help them of all ages, but especially the young ones that, that can't turn to their parents. And uh, to be an ear for them. But, but more important than that, when I'm out and I've got, say, 400 kids at, at an event, yeah, I'm trying to sell some of my merchandise. I'm trying to sell my DVDs and my picks. God forbid me trying to make a living. But you know what I've never done? I've never turned down a kid because they didn't have enough money for the DVD, for the tickets, for the pictures, for the memorabilia whatever it is that 
that I have on the table. Nothing makes me feel better than to see these uh, underprivileged children, undereducated children, children that are that are homeschooled in some cases and, and not getting the best care, and that's because of, of parenting. <clears throat> the kids that uh, have just been dealt a short stick in life. Right. And nothing makes me feel better than to give them a free framed autograph picture that ordinarily I might sell for $30. Or to give them a replica picture that normally I would sell for $5. Or a DVD that might sell from anywhere from 20 to thirty nine ninety five if it's a two-disc set. And the kid walks up and says, Mr. Bolin, how much is that DVD? Well, it's thirty nine ninety five. Well, Mr. Bolin, I only have $5. Well, you know what? Come here. Don't you tell anybody, but here, you take this DVD, and you take that $5, you can go over to the concession stand, and you get you something to eat. Happy birthday. When's your birthday? Well, it's not for six months. Well, you know what? Mr. Boland just gave you a birthday present. Happy birthday to you. And that's at, that's at an event where I'm there trying to sell and trying to make a living. Right. Now, when I go to restaurants, I, all, I, I don't. it does not fail that if I go into a restaurant in the tri-state area, you will never see me that I don't have 10 or 15 DVDs and 25 to 50 pictures in my hand to give out to all the kids that want them in the restaurant. I'm not walking around handing them out being Santa Claus. The kids know where to find me. They all ask about me when they come in, and, and it goes into the hands of the wrestling fans that really makes their day, that really want a picture of either Kenny Bolin or one of the one of the OVW stars, or they really want a picture of The Undertaker or Stone Cold Steve Austin or John Cena or some of the... Yeah, I get pictures from people that I've feuded with. I get pictures from people that I've managed. And, uh, and nothing makes their day more than to have an autographed picture from one of these stars. And in some cases, even framed autographed pictures that, that we have collected over the 13 years. And if anybody wants to tell me I'm doing wrong doing that, and yeah, uh, an awful lot of my money goes into that. awful lot of my time goes into that. And after I got diagnosed with congestive heart failure uh, a little over two years ago, and it was funny because I was with Callie, well, if you want to call it funny, I was with Callie the night that it happened. I was doing a birthday appearance for some, some kids that Callie knew through the radio show. Right. And me and a couple of my wrestlers went over to surprise these children that, that Kenny Bolin and, and a WWE star and an OVW star were coming to their birthday party to say, hey, and bring some gifts, bring some DVDs and pictures, eat some cake with them. Well, apparently the old king had one slice of cake too many that night because uh, I couldn't catch my breath when I left when I left the home. And, uh, and I had to be taken straight to the hospital that wow. night. But even on the night that I'm giving my time and my merchandise, I, I damn near went to the hospital and died trying to be a good guy. And uh, and Callie was the last person that I saw on my way on my way to the hospital when when the wrestlers and, and my son uh, took me to uh, University of Louisville Hospital here in Louisville. And uh, if it weren't for those good people, I might not be here today. I was in the hospital for a better part of three days. And. Um, and that that right there is is what kind of motivated the Bolin Foundation, and, and and that's what I've always called it because the Bolin Foundation has been around really since I've been with OVW, and and I take great pride and great thrill in making kids' days. And if if it's a picture, if it's a DVD, if it's tickets to a show, right? What what have you? <clears throat> And to know that that kid never had a prayer of ever handing me $40 for a two-set DVD or $30 for a framed autograph picture of John Cena right. or $50 for a framed autograph picture of Eddie Guerrero or, or Chris Benoit, one of the one of the greats that's passed away. I, I've got four or five different collectors that I work with. And it's, 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 it's sometimes not easy getting the collectors to cough these things up. But when they realize where it's going to, and and that I'm going to put what little money that I make into it to try and make this happen and then keep these kids happy and do the appearances free of charge, uh, I can't tell you the time that I've ever charged for a personal appearance if it involved children. I never have. Uh, Callie and I are doing one. To